Hey guys, welcome back. Back in August of 2018, I did a leveling video for motorhomes and RVs. Well, during the last four years, I realized that I didn't uh, cover a lot of other important details. And a lot of you asked me a lot of questions and comments uh, in that video. And I felt like, you know what, I need to update the leveling uh, videos. So today I'm going to cover my leveling 2.0 uh, video for a gas motorhome. Many of these practices and tips that I'm going to share today will be good for other RVers that have different types of RVs as well. You won't be disappointed. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. Today, as I said, I'm going to be covering all aspects of leveling. Why it's important, what not to do, snap pads, possibility of twisting the chassis frame, effects on appliances, and so on. You know, it's amazing to me some of the things I read online concerning leveling. Uh, people will post their opinions, right? I mean, we all have opinions, but a lot of those opinions are bad opinions and bad practices. I'm just dumbfounded uh, on the amount of people that Joni and I have seen in campgrounds that absolutely pay no attention to leveling correctly at all. <clears throat> but today, we're going to cover some of the good practices and good habits that all of us should be practicing and put into place every time we go to level. Now, my wife, Joni, and I, we've been uh, full-timing now going on uh, five years, and we have seen just about any type of uh, leveling issue uh, that you can think of. And I have developed a procedure and gear that I use where I can get level, practically perfectly level, every single time, and it's easy to do. And we're going to cover that today. Now, for reference, we have a 2012 Winnebago Vista 35F gas motorhome on an F53 chassis. It has a 228-inch wheelbase and is equipped with a power gear leveling system. Now, your leveling system may be different, but it doesn't matter. This procedure and gear will apply to you, too. We're not only going to look at the procedure on how to level, but the gear that I use to level, why I don't use auto level, and all the reasons of why it's important to get perfect level or almost as perfect level as you can. Now we are currently in RGV at our winter spot, which is on a concrete slab and it's pretty much level. And I'm gonna show you how we do that here. But I'm also gonna show you how we level on other surfaces, gravel, grass, they're uneven, they're on a slope, and all that type of things. Now the first reason to be close to perfect or perfect level is if you have an absorption refrigerator like we do. These type of refrigerators, when parked, need to be within a certain leveling tolerance in order to operate properly and to keep in top working condition and last a long time. That tolerance is six degrees front to back, three degrees side to side. So stay with me. This is gonna be really good stuff. Once we're parked, the very first thing I do is level the motorhome, right? The first thing I do is I take my phone and I have a leveling app right here. This is free online. And I'll place it right here on the countertop. Now the reason I put the phone here on the countertop is because I have tested the leveling throughout this coach in this area here. The counter is at level, the stove top, the floor, the freezer, the refrigerator, and I have found that right here at the countertop is the same as the fridge. So by putting it here, if, if it's level here, the fridge is level and the whole coach will be level. The reason I put the phone on the counter here first, while the engine is still running, is I wanna see where I am currently, where I'm parked. How do I look front to back and side to side? 
I mean, it's easy to level front to back, right? But where a lot of people get in trouble is side to side. I do this before I even think about deploying my leveling jacks. Now we have a power gear leveling system and we have a total of four jacks and they work in pairs. When I deploy the front jacks, both fronts come down at the same time and the rear jacks, when I deploy those, those two come down at the same time. Yours probably works the same way or very similar. But as you can see on my power gear panel, it also has a right and a left feature. Many of you probably have something similar to this. I'm going to use this little plastic bin here as a prop to kind of help me illustrate what we're talking about here. The problem is, is if you start to level when you're uneven and at a level side to side, what's going to happen is, is you're going to raise the front, then raise the back, but you're still going to be out of level. It's important to check the side to side first before you even begin to deploy the front or the back jacks. Now, some of you are going to say, well, I can just use my right toggle switch and raise the right end. Well, that's right. You can do that. But what happens is if you level the coach front and back while it's out of level from side to side and you hit the right button and raise this end up, what happens is, is usually in the back, the back jack now comes off the ground. So now you've got to lower the, the rear again and you end up going back and forth and back and forth, continuing to try to adjust to get the side up and then the back back up and then the front back up. And what that does is that can cause a twisting of the chassis and the frame. Sometimes it can be extreme, especially when people don't know what they're doing and they keep jacking it up and keep jacking it up. And there's just no reason to do that. That's why we want to level side to side first, then deploy the front and the rear jacks. In that example that I just showed you, you, you level with it being crooked, you know, sloping to one side, and now you raise that side and then the back and you keep doing all this adjusting and possibly twisting the frame. The big problem with that is also is the slides. You want that box, okay? You have a hole in the side of your RV, right? And you want that slide to be coming out out of a straight box and back in. You don't want that hole to be distorted or twisted or one side higher than the other. That'll put unnecessary binding and tension on the slide. If this motor home is leveled nice and even, that box maintains its integrity and that slide will come in and out a lot easier. And this especially is true on full wall slides. And like I said, all these problems can be eliminated if we level side to side first before we level front to back. And you do this by using blocking under the tires. Let's go outside. Here is where I uh, store all of my leveling gear right here. It's up front right next to the door. It's easily accessible. Uh, so when we arrive somewhere, it's really easy to get to. So let's go over this gear and I'm going to explain what, it, what all these pieces are and how I use them. These are my wooden leveling jack pads. These go literally underneath the rams themselves where you have the pad on the bottom of, the, of your jacks, right? I made them out of two by 12s. So they're 12 inches square. And then I took my router and I routed this groove in here so that the pad itself sits in here and it has no chance of it sliding off in high winds or anything like that. But it gives, me a, it gives me a nice place for those pads to settle. Then I took some rope and a piece of uh, half inch ID plastic handle here with some ski rope and fastened them to the side with some staples and then a metal clamp over that. Now, I've heard a lot of people say, yeah, well, my wooden, these wooden things, I tried that and they didn't work. They cracked, they broke, they blah, blah, blah. Well, the reason that happened is, is because one, you didn't make them thick enough. You notice how thick these are. This is three pieces. The next thing is, is that they are glued and screwed. You like that, huh? Glued and screwed. <laughs> these blocks right here, we, we use every time we level, literally, uh, unless it's an overnight level. 
Uh, and you can see they are in perfect shape. These are five years old. Now I use these blocks for several reasons. Number one, it prevents the travel of how long, how far those jack have to come down before they kiss and begin to raise the coach. Number two, I put them underneath the jacks uh, like in, in grass. You know, if we're, if we're parked in a grassy area and it's soft or it rains or whatever, these will not allow my jack uh, stands to go and sink down in the mud. You just put these underneath there, you have no problem with that either. They're easy to put underneath the jack and line up. And then when you get ready to pull them out and get on the road, you just grab the rope and drag them out. The next thing I carry are these plywood pieces. This is 3 8 plywood, stained and waterproofed. This is for the front tires. These are for the rear dualies. I'll cover these plywood pieces in just a minute. Then I have my nested leveling blocks. There are 10 of them. They have a handle and they are heavy duty. They will not get crushed or broken or cracked or anything like that for a big rig like this. You simply take the handle out like this here and they come out one at a time. So again, talking about leveling side to side, right? When we pull in and I see that I'm leaning to one side or the other and I'm in grass, I don't want to put these directly on the grass because once I pull this weight up, and especially if it starts to rain even more, these are going to sink into the ground. So on my dualies, I put this plywood first. So I'll put this plywood down here first and I put my leveling blocks on the plywood. Now this plywood is also used when I'm parked for long term on concrete or asphalt. I put this under the tires on asphalt because the chemicals in asphalt can uh, leach up into the tires and that's not good for tires. When we're parked for the winter or any long term parking on concrete, um, I'll put these underneath the tires also as a barrier. I want to keep those tires up off the concrete, keep them mostly dry and protected. I do, that's what I do down here in our GV, in our site here. Now some people will use uh, rubber pads, uh, horse trailer pads that they buy a tractor supply, whatever they want to use, I don't care. I just find rubber matting and all that kind of bulky to store and they're a little bit heavier than these little plywood blocks. But the key is to have some kind of barrier under your tires uh, when you're parked for a long period of time, like storage or like us here in winter. When leveling, you can use ABS plastic type uh, ramps uh, for, the tie for the front tires if you want. But in my opinion, this solution is cumbersome at best uh, for the rear dualies and it takes up too much storage space in comparison to my black nested blocks. Now in some circumstances, some of you, if you uh, have a home base and you park your motor home at your house for extended periods of time, you can use homemade ramps to get level. Ramps are also a good choice to safely uh, raise your coach to perform maintenance. But folks like us who travel full time, it's just not practical because they're too heavy and they take up too much storage space. Now I also carry a couple of uh, one by eights and a couple of two by twelves and another piece of plywood in here. This gives me the assortment of blocks in addition to these where I can find that right spot, that right thickness to get that side to side as level or perfect level as I can before I go ahead and level front to back. I, we've been using this stuff for years and it's, it's really kind of a, it's a no brainer. I mean, I know exactly what I have and when I go in and I look at that bubble and I see how far off I am, I know exactly whether I need to put a 3 8 plywood underneath there or I need to put two of these underneath there. If I need to put two underneath there, I'll just put one in front and, and make it act like a ramp. Get that tire up on top of here, then I can just pull that away and my tires will be sitting up that high. Before I show you how we're going to level our coach and some very important other information coming up, I'd just like to thank everyone again for using my Amazon store. So many of you uh, over the years have been going to my Amazon store 
and shopping on Amazon like you normally would. You just use my Amazon store link to go to Amazon first. But everything that I show in all of my videos on how to take care of your RV, upgrade it, and so on, those things are also in my store. Using my Amazon store is a great way to say thank you, Martin. Thank you for taking the time to making these videos and helping the RV community. For those of you who are new to my channel, the link to my Amazon store is down there in the description text. I don't ask for handouts on my channel. I do things the old fashioned way. I earn it. Okay, let's start leveling. And let's start right here in RGV at our winter spot. When leveling the coach here on this concrete pad, I already know I don't need to check side to side. I'm fine there. But I am going to put my 3 8 plywood blocks up underneath the tires. Okay, I got the coach parked on top of my plywood pads, front and back. Now I'm gonna put the wooden blocks under the leveling jacks. And now on the back. Okay, so the engine is running. I turn on my leveling jacks right here. I turn the on button right there. Now, if I wanted to go into auto level, I would just hit auto right here. I hate auto leveling. I'll get into that in a minute, but I want to go into manual mode. So I hold manual for about three to five seconds and the lights stop blinking. You see that? So you can see once I go into manual mode, it, it shows here that it's, uh, it's a little low in the rear and over to the right a little bit, but We've already checked that with our level, right? So we're not concerned about that. We are level side to side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, deploy the front jacks. And the reason we're going to do that is we want to stabilize the windshield. Okay, so we're going to deploy these and I can feel the jacks just kiss the blocks. You can see right there that the pads have kissed the blocks and maybe raise the coach about a half an inch or so. So now we're going to hit the rear jacks and bring them down just to where they kiss the blocks and raise it up just a little bit, like a half inch or an inch. Right there. So my front to back, you can see we are just, we, we are dead on. It actually is saying 0.3 degrees. We are dead on. I turn it side to side. Here's our side to side level. You can see that it's off just a hair, but and that's why that light on the control panel was lit. It's not. It's a half a degree off. So, in my world, that is a very close, if not a perfect level. So again, in any situation other than when I know it's level, I do my side to side first with blocks under the tires. Then I lower the front jacks, stabilize the windshield. Then I deploy the back jacks, raise it up, stabilize, come and check my level. Do I need to come up a little more in the front, a little more in the back, what have you. And once I'm at the point where I see, okay, that's good. The next thing I do is I come back to my a door. I like my doors to be able to gradually close on their own. I hate it when I'm out of level and a door swings open and it's constantly blocking the walkway and we're constantly having to keep the door closed. So this to me is actually a perfect level. Okay, so now that the slides are out, I come up here and turn off the engine and turn off the chassis battery. No need to have that on anymore. Okay, so let's take a look under the chassis. You see how little travel that my uh, jacks have extended. I actually brought a tape measure here. Look at that, it's six inches. That's what you want. You don't have to really extend these things way out uh, like you would if you were gonna auto level. By having this short amount of travel, your springs here also, these are the retraction springs. So when you wanna retract the leveling jacks, these springs are gonna still maintain their tension. If you overextend these jacks and stretch these way up, these springs are going to get stretched 
And over time, they're also going to become weak. And they're not going to uh, keep their tension to draw these jacks up. You see, a lot of people have on these problems. My jacks won't come up. Well, that's one of the problems right there that, that can happen. So using your leveling jacks in, in just the, a small amount to extend and get level will overall prevent premature failure on parts of your leveling system. I mean, it's, it's really quite that simple. So here's another common sense uh, observation. When your jacks are barely extended like this, your coach overall has better stability. Okay, so now let me show you how we level on some other types of uneven surfaces. Now in this first example, we pulled into a campground for three days and all sites had gravel. Looking at the site, it looked fairly level, but when I backed in, I put my phone on the counter and it clearly showed I was low on the passenger side. I put the plywood on top of the block because in this case, with the gravel, I didn't want to take a chance of it cracking the plywood on the gravel. The level bubble on my phone was right smack in where it needed to be, just kind of like what I showed you here. And so from that point, I just went ahead and leveled as, as I normally do in, in manual mode. Raise the front first and then the back until I get it level front to back. In this second example, we were going to be parked for about three months in Maine on an asphalt driveway. This was before I bought my awesome nested black leveling blocks. So here I placed plywood under all the tires to get level side to side first, then leveled the coach like I normally would in manual mode. In this third example, we're going to be parked for about three months again in Maine, but this time on a sloped grassy area. So the passenger side was quite low and we're on grass. So I leveled side to side first using my plywood as the first layer. Then my black blocks situated with a single block in front to act as a ramp. Once the passenger rear tires were up on the blocks, I removed the ramp part and I did the same thing with the front tire. Now I'm leveled side to side and now I can level from front to back in manual mode like I normally do. And here's the final level at this location. Now when Joni and I are traveling, there are many times where I'll pull into a place and it's just for an overnight stay or maybe two days. For example, like in a Cracker Barrel, a truck stop, a campground. In these situations, I don't take the time to get perfectly level. As long as the bubble and my leveling app is between those lines for those short stays, I'm good. I know that the, the refrigerator is, is within its tolerance. It'll be fine. And I don't have to worry about all the rest. I mean, we're leaving the next morning, right? I just make sure that I am got the coach level within those lines. That's all that's necessary for an overnighter. Now, for those of you, I know there's always those critics out there going through my videos and saying, what an idiot. You don't need to be perfectly level. Well, that's good. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going to show you some things that may maybe convince you that taking the little extra step to get, all, to get almost level or perfect level, it actually is, uh, has its benefits while living in the RV. How many of you cook in your RV? Huh? Let me see a show of hands. All of you, right? Yeah. Have you ever noticed that when you're cooking in the RV, put a pan up on there, you're gonna cook some hash browns, some meat, whatever it is you're gonna do. You put oil in the pan and what happens when you're unlevel? All the oil runs to one side of the pan, right? Well, not a big deal, but it doesn't have to be that way. That pan and oil can be all level around that whole pan. How many of you shower in your RV? Mm-hmm, I do, every Saturday. Have you noticed when you are not level and you take a shower in the RV, all the water from the shower runs to one corner, right? And then after your shower, you gotta take your foot and you gotta start shoveling that water back to the drain to get it drained out. It doesn't have to be this way. There is a better way. How about your doors? When you're unlevel, your doors are constantly opening and getting in the way of foot traffic. That just is so aggravating to me. Uh, it's just one of those things you're constantly fussing with. I would like to be perfect level or close to perfect level 
And as I showed you, those doors will just gradually close and they'll stay out of the way. It's all these little things that makes RV living uh, good and happy. Remember the old saying, happy husband, happy life, right? That's why I put this extra effort in this stuff. These are just some of the reasons why I like to take the extra step to get that side to side with blocking before I level manually and make living a whole lot easier. So, in summary, and my final thoughts. Number one, concerning snap pads. I see people online ask this question all the time. Should I get snap pads? I like snap pads. I want a bigger footprint, blah, blah, blah. Personally, I don't like snap pads, and I think they're a waste of money. And they're not cheap either. Now, I know people buy these because they want a larger footprint on the bottom of the pad on their leveling jacks. I get that. The problem is, is that they don't address the overextending part of the jacks. So for example, you put the snap pads on the bottom of your jacks, right? You, you don't use wooden blocks. That's why you bought the snap pads. You want a bigger footprint. So you go to level with your snap pads on, and you hit auto leveling or manual leveling. Either way, your jacks still have to extend way down and raise and level the coach because you don't have any blocking under the jack pads, okay? The whole point of this is not having to raise the coach so much and overextend those, pat those jacks. So what's the point in the, the snap pads? Forget the snap pads, save the money, Get you some blocks. They can be wooden blocks like mine. You want to build something else? I don't care. But if you put some blocking under those jack pads, you've one, solved the problem of overextending your jacks, and two, you got a bigger footprint because the pad is sitting on the big blocks. That's my argument. I'm sticking to it. Number two, having a perfect level or almost perfect level makes RV living a whole lot nicer. And it's good for the RV. You don't run a risk of twisting the chassis. You don't binding the slides. And your absorption refrigerator, if you have one, is perfect. It'll love you. Number three, when leveling your motorhome, never bring the rear tires off the ground. That's where your emergency brake is. And even though you see people all around raising their front end of their motorhome way up and bringing those tires way off the ground, it's a horrible habit to practice for all the reasons that I've explained before, and it just shouldn't be done. Leveling jacks are not lifting jacks. They're leveling jacks. The way I'm showing you here by using blocking under the tires to get side to side, get that really close, putting the blocks under your leveling jacks, the leveling jack system itself is to fine tweak that level, not lift that baby two feet off the ground. They're not lifting jacks. They're leveling jacks, and they're supposed to be used accordingly. Number four, I highly encourage all of you uh, to have blocking like I have or something similar to what I have. You need an assortment of different things that that you can draw from, have an inventory, so that when you come up into a situation, you're gonna have different things to get that side to side, and then it'll make your front to back leveling a, a snap, and it'll be very fast and easy to do. Well, that's it for now. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.